Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And this is the part two of two in regards to potting tips. This lesson is called the 711 potting tips with the seven do nots as well as the 11 do's, helpful tips to maximize the health and the life of all of your potted plants and trees. I hope you enjoy this educational lesson. These lessons virtually apply to all potted plants, whether they be citrus, any other fruit trees, um, as well as your ficus, your house plants, and any other ornamental. These lessons pretty much apply to all plant health and plant care as it relates to your potted plants. And because we've got seven don'ts plus 11 do's, a total of 18 tips that we're gonna go over, let's get started right away. So in the summer, you're naturally gonna be watering your plants more than spring and more than fall. The other extreme to summer is winter. In the winter, you're obviously gonna be watering your plant the least amount, but you still need to be watering your plants. If it's not naturally raining, wherever your pots are located, you need to water your plants at least once a month. As the plant does need water, as do people, in order to sustain all of the metabolic processes that are happening within even a dormant plant. So, even a once a month watering for all of your dormant plants that you may be bringing into the garage and storing over winter, um, you do need to water at least once a month. So the next helpful tip is to feed your plants. It's important to feed your plants a balanced organic fertilizer that'll offer basically all the elements your plants need for proper health, metabolism, and basically fuel the plant to create all of the things that plants do. Aside from making sugars through the process of photosynthesis, they also make proteins and they make um, vitamins and they make minerals and all of these things that are important for human health as well as animal health. They all depend on plants and in order for the plant to reach its optimal performance, they must have all of their macronutrients as well as a lot of the micronutrients as well. The macronutrients, and let me share with you here, um, can be found in this product over here called Ivory Organics. This one here is the Super Blend, six macros plus, which offers your plants all of the macronutrients plants need. Six macros are the six macronutrients, which include nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, sulfur, and calcium. There is no organic fertilizer on the market that offers, at least in my research, that offers plants all of the six macronutrients, hence the reason and the creation for the six macros blend. And it also has a lot of the micronutrients as well as contains beneficial microbes and mycorrhiza. Um, it basically, again, let's look at these check marks. Contains all the essential plant macronutrients, quality ingredients, support soil beneficial organisms, and for organic gardening. If you take a look here at the um, ingredients, you can see it's basically derived from feather meal, alfalfa meal, bone meal, kelp meal. It's about seven to 10 ingredients, about seven lines deep, including a lot of beneficial microorganisms, including the beneficial bacteria and mycorrhiza as well. And you can see here with the micronutrients, it includes iron, magnesium, zinc, copper, and boron. When it comes to the use of the product, and we're gonna um, demonstrate um, a few of those uses right now, is you can use it for your soil by simply adding it around the plant, um, the drip zone. You can also use it as a foliar nutritional spray, as well as a supplement to your compost tea. So we're gonna review all of those. And the other thing too, unlike a lot of the um, organic fertilizers, just check out how high that NPK is with 13% nitrogen, 12% phosphorus, 13% potassium, as well as has magnesium, sulfur, and calcium. Um, and they're also very liquid soluble as well, which is important for the liquid application, which we'll discuss. This one here being a four pound bag as a liquid application, it's one tablespoon, if I can find that here, it's one tablespoon per gallon of water. So this four pound bag will, can make as much as 120 gallons of um, liquid feed. These ones here are smaller packages um, of, right here you can see 11.8 ounces. This one here is the Super Blend as well. I'm also carrying the Premium Blend. This 11.8 ounce can, um, bag can make over 20 gallons of liquid fertilizer as well. The Premium Blend is basically lower NPK of 244 and then 1217. It's got a lot of extra calcium in there for um, your calcium loving plants such as your tomatoes. And what we're gonna do next is demonstrate the use and the application of having these fertilizers on your plants. 
These fertilizers can also be used to supplement a lot of your other organic fertilizers you're using within the garden. If you've got, for example, blood meal and you're trying to get a lot of extra nitrogen to your plant, you can do so, but you can supplement it with the Ivory Organic 6 Macros products to basically make sure that when you're caring and feeding for your plants, you're making sure all of the macro elements are available to the plant, as well as a lot of the micro nutrients, as well as it's got the beneficial mycorrhiza um, spores, as well as beneficial bacteria as well. Um, within the products. When it comes to feeding your plants, it's important to basically feed your plants during the entire growing season. And for the majority of America, that is gonna be spring, summer, and then um, towards fall, you may need to stop with the feeding. As soon as it turns fall, your temperature might be taking a turn towards the coldest um, quite early in the season. Um, and so you may stop feeding your plants, let's say by August or September may be your last feed, and it'll be a small feed relative to your early summer feed um, where the plant is capitalizing on 14 hours of daylight and just these long, um, bright days where they're capitalizing on all the things that plants metabolize and do within um, a growing day. Compared to during the winter, we're dealing with only 10 hours of light, and most of the plants, even the evergreens, are pretty much hibernating, very little growth and very little happening um, for a plant during that time. And that's a time where you will not be feeding your plants with the exception of maybe doing a foliar feed on your tropical and even your, um, and even your evergreen um, type plants such as your citrus and your avocados, mangoes, um, and even some house plants can benefit from a foliar nutritional feed, which we're gonna demonstrate shortly. So the tip is do feed your plants during the, during the growing season and feed your potted plants I like feeding it at the first week of every single month. The reason is every time you go to watering your potted plant, those nutrients are basically leaching and working their way out of the container and out of the pot. And it's hard basically to regulate and make sure that there's always um, fertilizer and food available, and especially all of the nutrients that the plants need from month to month to month, as a lot of those are being uptake by the plant and the rest of them are being washed out of the container. So my practice is to simply the first week of every single month during the growing season is to add a little bit more fertilizer and we're going to do that momentarily. The do not tip is do not organically feed your plants during the winter and I don't ever recommend using a chemical fertilizer but that's another hour long discussion um, as to why not and there's a lot of reasons why not. With an organic fertilizer applied during the winter months the risk is being that there's minimal microbial activity happening within the soil, there's very little life to basically break down the organics, releasing the elements necessary to the plant and for the plant uptake. But on top of that, since we have already said this now a few times, the plant is pretty much hibernating. Even your evergreens are pretty much um, not doing much in the winter. So all of those elements, even if they were released into the soil, are not truly gonna be uptake by the plant as well as it otherwise would come spring, summer, and even early fall, especially for us here in Southern California where it's a warmer and more temperate climate year round. Adding an organic fertilizer in the winter, again, without that microbial life to break it down, could result in that organic fertilizer rotting and contributing towards disease and ultimately root rot. So you wouldn't want that phenomenon happening by adding organics in the winter. So that's my do not is do not feed your plants in the winter months. Another do not is do not immediately feed your plants after transplanting them. That is one shock. Doing anything to the plant, simply moving its position from one corner of your garden to another corner of a garden, maybe a different microclimate, different temperatures, different amount of light, maybe a different side of the plant is getting now exposed to um, light compared to shade. All of these are, are changes in the plant and all of these are naturally now stresses to the plant. So do not feed your plant at least for the first week. So after a week has passed, then you'll come to feeding and doing now the next steps of care for your potted plants. Well, now let's get started with feeding the plants together. So again, assuming this is now a week later, we're now going to feed the plants. So for your potted plants, the recommended application is to apply about a half a tablespoon per gallon of container. So for this Eureka lemon that's in a one gallon container, we're simply going to take our tablespoon measuring cup, we're simply going to add a half a tablespoon, 
and we're going to simply sprinkle it around the container like so. So we're simply going to apply it around the root zone and then we can simply take a hand tool like this and the goal is to simply scratch the product into the top quarter inch and the eighth of an inch and the goal is not to really disturb any of the surface roots but to simply get the life that is within this organic fertilizer as well as all of those minerals in contact with the soil and the soil microbes and then immediately we're just going to water it water it in and we're going to continue this pattern with all of the other plants as well so here we go again this here being about a gallon, we're going to add a half a tablespoon and sprinkle it around the root zone. Take our hand tool here and just scratch that into the surface. And we're going to water that down. The next application for this product that I want to share with you is the use as a liquid fertilizer. So let's get back to our workstation. So the next application I want to share with you with using the 6 Macros fertilizer is its application as a liquid fertilizer as well. If we take a look at the back together, you can see here that is a um, foliar feed that we can create something by simply adding one tablespoon of Ivory Organic 6 Macros Plus per gallon of water and allow it to basically rest for about an hour. So what we're going to do here is simply take the product. If you take a look at the container here, you can see this here is a two gallon container. Being that the water is only halfway, we've got one gallon of water. So we'll take our one tablespoon here and we're going to add that to the water like so. And I'm just going to mix that in to the water so it can begin to dissolve in the tobacco. So let's assume an hour has passed. It's ideal to allow it to rest per the instruction state to um, basically be in contact with the water so it can basically break down and dissolve into the water um, to its maximum um, ability. And we'll simply take the solution we've created and we can now feed our plants this way. And I can simply water the leaves of my purple splash rose and as well as water the soil. And what's happening now with the Six Macros product is I've got all of the macronutrients on the leaves as well as in the soil as well as a lot of those micro elements as well. So now we're fully feeding, it's basically going into the leaf, as well as whatever is dripping into the root zone, it's also feeding the roots as well. So this is a way to basically dual feed your plants as well. There's one other way the product can be used is also as a foliar spray. And let's go and create that solution together now. So if you come in a little closer and you take a look at the watering can, you'll notice that a lot of the product is still basically floating in the container. There's still some large pieces that are in here. What we're gonna do next to basically create a foliar spray, and this here I basically labeled a container, the Ivory Organics Foliar Nutritional Spray that we're gonna use on our citrus and on our avocados and mangoes and on our passion fruit vines, and basically any of the evergreen, the plants that are green throughout the winter can uptake a lot of these elements. And let's take a look again on the back here. You can see again, you got your nitrogen, your phosphorus, your potassium, your magnesium, sulfur, and calcium, as well as a lot of these micro elements that the plant can uptake through the leaf being iron, manganese, zinc, copper, and boron. And the goal is you want the plants to have all of these elements within its structure before it basically pushes out all of the spring blooms and ultimately will support the maximum amount of fruit because it has everything it otherwise needs. What we're gonna do now is basically create a foliar spray. And what I wanna do is create a product that won't block my spray end. And to accomplish this, what I'm gonna do is simply take, today I'm gonna to use a, uh, this cloth, I can use a shirt, I can use a paint filter as well. Um, but what we're simply gonna do is I've got this clear cup over here so you can see as we filter, 
I'm putting this cloth there, like so, and I'm using a rubber band to hold the cloth in place as we filter it. So I'm basically trying to create a little bit of a funnel action here, like so. And I'm gonna remove this end so I can target the solution to go right into the container. And let's do that now. And you can see how fast it's basically gonna fill up. And, and I'm gonna end up with a pure nutritional spray solution. So I'm gonna carefully pour that in over the top. Get that a little deeper and Looks like we got a cup of solution. So now we'll remove that. Anything that got trapped up above will be rinsed and still introduced into the garden as we don't want to lose any of this product. And now you can see we've got a crystal clear nutritional spray that we can now add. I'm gonna do this over one of my potted plants so that anything that spills is still going to feed one of the plants. And now I've got a container, as you can see, it's quite full, but I've got a container of nutritional spray that I can now use to foliar feed all of my plants. Right now my Eureka lemon, we just did the lantana, and come around and do our raspberry latte fig. And these plants for the first time ever are getting everything they ever could wish for. And let's go in the garden and even share some of the other plants that can benefit from a foliar nutritional spray as well. Follow me. So these here are our Meyer lemons, uh, also known as the sweet lemon. And again, citrus love a foliar feed. And the cool thing as well, by getting all of these elements into the plant, what do you think they're all gonna end up? Ultimately, they're gonna create the most nutritious and healthy and flavorful foods as well for you and your family. Check out my Fuerte avocado. Avocados love to be fed with a foliar nutritional spray. So we've said earlier not to fertilize your plants in the winter months. However, when it comes to a foliar feed, there's no better time to get those macro and micro elements into the plant when the root activity is at its lowest, you can still get a lot of nutrients into the plants through the process of foliar feeding. So doing a nutritional spray during the winter is a great time to keep your plants looking green and performing at its best in time for the spring blooms, especially on your evergreen fruiting fruit plants that you've got growing on your property. Another thing that's extremely important and very beneficial to your plants at the time of repotting or even for any of your in-ground plantings is to whitewash your plants. And Ivory Organics has a few products for accomplishing just that. What whitewashing will do is help create a cooler plant. If you have any pruned surfaces, it'll basically protect it from disease as well as pests from entering those pruned and damaged areas of the plant. Um, and the list goes on and on, and I'll review a couple of products and how they can help your plant. The three Ivory Organics whitewash products include, and they're all over here, is the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard, protection against damaging, sunburn, insects, and rodents. This is registered material for use in organic agriculture, and the application you can see up here is it says as it says here protects newly installed plants and trees and we just repotted so it could be used for that purpose as well as shield pruned and damaged surfaces and the active ingredients here in here include castor cinnamon cloves garlic peppermint rosemary and spearmint the um, products also are available aside from being in color white it's available in colors brown and green 
And then this here is the whitewash formula for protection against damaging summer sunburn and winter sun scald that offers the plant insulation during the winter months. And all of these products are for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. And in fact, there are all plants have benefited by basically whitewash, whether it's used as a brush on, a foliar spray, or as a tree paste, um, depending on what plant and what size and so on and so forth. This one here is the ready to use spray. This one again has the protection against damaging sunburn insects and rodents. The difference between the yellow label and the blue label is the blue label lacks the seven oils that offer the protection against pests and insects. So if you're simply looking for that sun protection, whether it be summer sunburn or winter sun scald, then you'd be using the blue label product. Um, and when you go to open it up, what you're basically gonna find within the um, contents is this organic base powder, as well as this bubble wrapped oil vial, which contains the seven garden oils. When combined together, they basically create a bond that'll last an average of about a year. When even sprayed on your plant leaves, we can start off with this product over here. When we spray it on the lantana, for example, we've just created a cooler structure. You can see this organic sunblock um, that's created, being that it's also got the protection from insects and rodents. The leaves are now scented in a way that'll naturally repel insects from chewing on the plant, especially when repotting and replanting the plant. The natural plant defenses are lower and that's typically a time when pests will typically invade and harm the plant. So even on your tomatoes, your peppers, your squash, all of your plantings that you do, initially you can spray it. It'll help create a cooler plant um, that'll be less sun stressed, more insect proof to basically get to an established healthier plant sooner than without the protection. We're gonna continue spraying the rest of the plants and let's do that together. So here we are with the raspberry latte fig and the Eureka lemon. And if there's any risk of a heat wave, we can spray this in advance of a heat wave and it'll better protect the leaves. Even if the leaves cook, it's important to also protect the stems from burn. So this here will create a very light and hence it's a, it's a spray formula. If you want a better protection to the overall branches and trunk of the plant, you're gonna to wanna to apply the product as a brush on. Let's do that together. So instead of using a latex paint or a tar-based um, rose prune seal, those products are designed to last forever. You paint your house, you come back 100 years later and there's still paint on your house. You put paint on your plants and within a year or two, and at most, like even for like a larger tree, that bark's eventually gonna fall off and create a new layer of bark, just like our skin naturally replaces its um, epidermis cells on average every 30 to 60 days. You're gonna wanna accomplish this white washing principle and concepts and benefit to your plant using an organic method as if you're using a latex paint or a tar-based product, those products are gonna end up in your soil, again, within about a year or two, and it's gonna remain in your soil pretty much indefinitely. So using an organic-based product such as this is a safer and healthier alternative. And another great advantage of the Ivory Organics product is that the products are porous, allows water to pass, whereas latex and tar trap moisture and end up in wood rot wherever that is applied to the plant. So this is a healthier alternative for the plant. So what I'm gonna do here is on this particular lantana, if you come in a little closer, you'll see that wherever I pruned a branch, as I've done over here, I'm simply gonna seal it to keep any beetles, termites, or any disease from entering it. I'm using color white, but it, you can imagine that if had I used color brown, it would look quite natural on this wood. And over here is another pruned surface, and a third pruned surface as well. And let's go check out the other plants we've done. So here we are with the raspberry latte. And we'll just prune that in like so. And over here with the Eureka lemon, we'll basically coat that prune surface like so as well. What we can also do is protect the entire tree trunk as well from too much sunburn until the plant can create a canopy that'll naturally shade the underlying tree trunk and branches. 
It's important to also whitewash your plant. There are a lot of university studies that talk about the benefit of whitewashing your plants immediately at planting. There's another benefit when you're repotting and moving plants is to basically keep those prune surfaces coated and protected. By whitewashing the stem, we're preventing the risk of sunburn to all of these exposed surfaces as this particular plant lacks a canopy and all of these exposed areas are prone to sunburn and the plant's gonna end up investing a lot of its resources towards repairing that burn instead of putting its resources towards growth. And we're gonna go all the way down to the base of the tree trunk and basically go as high as we can. For the areas that we can't reach, that's when you'd come in with your foliar spray and spray those hard to get areas as the example being with a rose bush like this, it would be harder to get into, let's say, these little stems in here, and a lot easier to simply just spray the product on it and within it. And here's another example over here, if we can get this fig out of the way. If you come to take a look at this particular tree, you can see over here we've pruned a branch about a year ago. Um, this year was for a grafting project. It's still about a year or two away from healing. We've used the ivory organics color green in the past, but it has since um, wore away. And again, the application was over a year ago. And we didn't use it as it could otherwise be, be used as a tree paste, which would have better filled in those cracks. But again, here we are using the brush on directions. But as a tree paste, we can add a lot less water, being a quarter cup to have about a third of a can of something that would be like a toothpaste consistency. As a foliar spray, I'm gonna give you a tip on that in just a second, but it's just one to two teaspoons of the brush on direction um, solution, which we simply added water to um, the organic base powder, but we're simply gonna fill in all of these cracks. Again, the goal being um, to prevent pests and disease from entering it. The better product to have used would have also been the yellow label, being that it had the oils to prevent dizzy, um, particularly um, insects from penetrating the wood. For example, if this was a peach tree and we've got peach tree borers, the Ivory Organics 3-in-1, the yellow label with those oils, would help repel beetles from re-entering the wood. If there's any holes that are created after because you've tr got trapped beetles working their way out, you'd simply go and apply a second and even maybe a third coat brushing it onto the plant. We're gonna go as low as we can again to the base of the tree trunk. And again, you can imagine now, I do expect it to grow a little bit in the upcoming couple of weeks, but again, it's gonna go through winter completely exposed to full sun all day long, every single day for about three to four months until it pushes out new growth come February or March. So again, this whitewashing technique will help, one, insulate the plant, keeping it then it insulated against the extremes of winter, wind burn, in addition to also preventing it from drying out, which is one of the symptoms of winter sun scald. And again, we're coating all of the pruned surfaces, as well as we're basically coating all of the exposed branches. So the next helpful tip I wanna share with you is that the Ivory Organics pint can, and this is a huge helpful tip, and whether it be the blue can, the whitewash formula, or the three-in-one yellow can, can make up to five gallons of foliar spray. So if your goal is to create a ready-to-use spray like this, you can simply get the pint can and create all of your ready-to-use spray whenever you'd like. And this product has a shelf life of five years and once you add water to it, it's recommended that for all the solution you've created, if you don't use it, it's to then freeze it and then defrost it before you reuse it to basically preserve the proteins that are in there that basically create the bond to maximize its longevity in regards to being in contact with the plant. Um, but the best application is to mix what you want. And what I wanna share with you today is how to make your own ready to use spray using one of these cans and just showing you how little you need in order to create it. Let's take a look at the directions for those of you that have the product already. If you take a look at the back here, it says the brush on directions is um, simply adding water to this can. I'm gonna skip all of those steps. But as a foliar spray, it says may it also be used to make a total plant including foliage, sunscreen, and insect repellent spray by diluting one to two teaspoons 
of the prepared brush on solution per gallon of water. And that basically creates something that's quite dilute and even more dilute than this ready to use spray bottle, um, which again is just to say in other words, is a little bit more concentrated than following these directions. As I just said, one of these cans, whether it be the blue or the yellow, can make five gallons of foliar spray. And the way we're gonna accomplish that today is we're simply gonna take the base powder and I'm going to take a teaspoon and I'm going, only gonna take about a quarter to a third of a teaspoon to a cup, like so. And, and now what we're gonna do is simply take water and add it to the powder. And you can see how we've already got a consistency that looks pretty similar to milk. We're gonna mix that up. We still have our oil, oil vial. We're gonna get to that in just a minute. So to make sure that this solution doesn't interfere with this spray end, we're simply gonna take now another cup and we're basically gonna be using this cloth to filter the solution. And again, you can use a paint strainer, a shirt, a cloth as I'm doing right now, a sock, just whatever to remove any larger particles from interfering with your spray end. And we'll now add the solution like so. And now we've got a filtered organic ready to use spray solution. And now we'll simply take our, our filtered solution. We can now add the oils so that none of our oils get caught up in the filtration part. We can just add a few drops of oils like so. And again, if there's no pest issue, no need for the oil, but if the goal is to create that pest defense as well, we're gonna add the oils and now we're gonna add it to our spray bottle. Add our spray end, shake well. And now we've created our own whitewash solution using the Ivory Organics pint. And now let's apply it to a plant so you can see the consistency of it. And now you can see what the solution looks like on this plant over here. If you come in a little closer, you can see that the leaves are a little white. It'll dry practically clear on the plant, but if you come close enough, you'll always still see the product. It'll stay on the leaves an average of about three to nine months, offering protection to those leaves. You can still foliar feed through the product as well because unlike latex paint, we're not sealing and trapping moisture. We're still allowing water to pass and nutrients to enter. Um, and Again, this will help curb the extremes of both the summer sun as well as the winter cold as well as wind burn. Um, and again, all the benefits that come with whitewashing plants and you can do some further research on how that basically can be used on plants within your garden as well. But we've just covered a whole bunch of lessons on how the Ivory Organics products can be used and the benefits and um, I think this is one of the first videos where we made our own homemade whitewash solution. How one of those bags can be basically broken down to also create and I've got this pump sprayer behind me, if you want to come in a little closer. But we can do pretty much the same process with a pump sprayer. And here we are, we've got this pressure pump sprayer that we can use with one gallon of water. We can simply take also our organic base powder, apply one fifth of it again, because one of these bags can make five gallons of foliar um, spray. But I can take one fifth of the powder, one fifth of the oil vial, add it to a gallon of water, add the pressure spray, and now I can easily spray all of the tallest trees in my garden and basically do all the plants in one easy um, application and also the most economical way to apply the product to all the plants that it can benefit from the protections. To reiterate the recommendation, whitewash all of your plants whenever you repot them, whenever you plant them in the ground, Whenever you move a plant, it's important to consider whitewashing the plants, whether you use it as a ready to use spray, or I've got here the um, blue whitewash label or the yellow three in one product um, and all the various ways the products can be used, being again, a foliar spray, a tree paste, or a brush on 
um, application to your plan. So that is the helpful do tip um, as it relates to whitewashing your plans. I've now got two do nots to talk about. And let's return back to the planting station. Come over here. So my next tip is a do not. Do not put rocks in your potted plants as decorative stones. As adding rocks to the surface is equivalent to putting rocks on your chest. It's not ideal. You wouldn't want all that weight on you when all of those surface roots that are breathing and bringing in nutrients and moisture are being compressed by all of this added weight. I didn't really add that many rocks as I didn't find that many rocks around my property, but I'm just here to demonstrate that um, you'll notice a lot of potted plants with rocks around it, and that is not the ideal situation for the optimal health and life of the plant. The better preferred way, instead of doing rocks, is to be using wood chips. And here we are just adding a layer of wood chips, which will help reduce the amount of weeds around the plant. It'll also, every time you go to water, these wood chips, which are basically derived from more plant life, will break down, creating the elements necessary for sustaining and creating life. It'll also continuously feed all of the soil biology that's within the soil. But the another do not, if you come in a little closer, I've seen a lot of um, people providing gardening education, um, basically piling up inches upon inches of mulch around the tree trunk. And this will result in another phenomenon known as stem rot. It's important to basically pull back on your wood chips away from the tree trunk so you don't end up with that stem rot phenomenon. And you still want to give the plant all the benefits of basically insulating the soil. In the summer, it'll keep the soil cooler. In the winter, it'll keep it warmer. Um, as we discussed already, it'll keep weeds down. It'll offer nutrition and food to the plant as this continuously breaks down. And it's good practice to add more mulch around your plant, more wood chips around the plant every six months to a year. Um, and again, we're just creating a layer of about two to three inches around the plant and water will quickly get through it. Um, and it'll also, when it comes to water, it'll cut back on watering by almost 50%. But with your potted plants, it's still important to um, manage and watch the watering practice. This leads to my last do not, and it is do not water your plants the same spring, summer, fall, and winter. Every season, the plant needs a different amount of water. And early in one season, it'll be a lot different than later on in that season. The example being is this. For us here in Los Angeles, I would be watering this plant in spring and fall, an average of about two to three times per week. Um, basically alternating maybe days, maybe two to three days in between with no watering. And the goal and the test between waterings is to make sure that the soil dries out. You'd want to check about two to three inches deep and see that the soil is dry but never bone dry because if it's bone dry, now all of the soil life is also stressing out in addition to the plant that's um, you know thirsty for water. Um, but you also don't want to be watering to the point that you're suffocating and drowning and also fostering disease and ultimately contributing towards root rot. So the goal is to err towards dryness more so than having a continuously wet pot. Um, so to accomplish that again in spring and fall, that's two to three waterings per week. In the summer, it could be almost every single day, depending on the location within the property. And again, Within one yard, there could be different microclimates justifying the need for watering every day versus watering every one to three days um, in the summer as well. If, for example, it's closer to a north wall, it may be shaded for a couple of hours um, before it starts its day compared to another plant that might be exposed to a full 14 hours of daylight in the middle of summer. So if you've enjoyed this educational moment brought to you by Ivory Organics, be sure to give us a thumbs up and most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to this and all of our other educational gardening videos. Most importantly, don't forget to hit that push bell notification to get a reminder as soon as an Ivory Organics video is released. So I hope all these helpful potting tips help make this your best growing season ever and wishing you all happy gardening. Mm.